Hello everyone, welcome to your own channel The Lyceum. Today we are going to discuss about the topic syntax. Syntax is the set of rules, principles, and processes that govern the structure of sentences in a language. It involves the arrangement of words to create meaningful sentences. Importance of Syntax Syntax ensures clear communication by structuring language in a way that conveys precise meaning. Without syntax, language would be ambiguous and unclear. Basic Components of Syntax Phrase Structure How words form larger units like noun Phrases and verb phrases Phrase structure refers to the way individual words combine to form larger units of meaning within a sentence. These larger units are known as phrases. 1. Basic concept of a phrase. A phrase is a group of words that work together to fulfill a particular function within a sentence. A noun phrase is a group of words that centers around a noun, which acts as the head of the phrase. Example, simple NP, the cat. 3. Verb phrases, VP. A verb phrase is a group of words that centers around a verb, which is the head of the phrase. Verb phrases often include the main verb along with its complements, objects, or modifiers. 4. Phrase structure rules. Phrase structure can be described using phrase structure rules, which are a set of grammatical rules that specify how different types of phrases are formed. Sentence structure, arrangement of subject, predicate, and object. Sentence structure refers to how words are organized within a sentence to convey a clear and complete idea. 1. Subject. The subject answers the question, who, or what, before the verb. In the cat sleeps, the cat is the subject. 2. Predicate. The predicate is the part of the sentence that tells something about the subject. It includes the verb and can include additional information like objects or complements. The predicate explains what the subject is doing or what is happening to the subject. Example, in the cat sleeps, sleeps is the predicate. 3. Object. The object receives the action of the verb. It is usually a noun or pronoun and can be direct or indirect. The object answers what or whom after the verb. In English, the most common sentence structure is subject-verb-object, SVO, but variations and more complex structures can be used to convey different nuances and details. Word order, the typical order of words in sentences. Word order refers to the arrangement of words in a sentence to convey a clear and precise meaning. Different languages follow different patterns for word order, but in English, the typical order is quite consistent and follows specific patterns. Basic word order in English. The most common word order in English is subject-verb-object, SVO. Importance of word order. Clarity. Word order helps ensure that the sentence's meaning is clear and unambiguous. For instance, the cat chased the dog is different from the dog chased the cat. Grammar. Following the typical word order is crucial in English. Deviating from the standard order can lead to confusion or incorrect sentences. Emphasis. Word order can be adjusted for emphasis or stylistic reasons. For example, starting a sentence with an object for emphasis. That book, I need to read. Agreement. Ensuring subjects and verbs agree in number and tense. Agreement in grammar refers to the correspondence between different parts of a sentence. The most common type of agreement is between the subject and the verb. Subject-verb agreement in tense. Tense indicates when the action of the verb takes place, past, present, or future. The verb must reflect the correct tense based on the time of the action and must remain consistent throughout a sentence or passage. Present tense agreement. He runs every morning. Singular subject, singular present tense verb. They run every morning. Plural subject, plural present tense verb. Past tense agreement, she ran to the store yesterday. Past tense verb for a singular subject. They ran to the store yesterday. Past tense verb for a plural subject. Future tense agreement, he will run tomorrow. Future tense verb for a singular subject. They will run tomorrow. Future tense verb for a plural subject. Subordination and coordination, linking clauses in sentences. Subordination and coordination are two fundamental techniques used to connect clauses within sentences. By linking clauses effectively, we can create complex, nuanced, and varied sentences. Coordination. Coordination is the process of linking two or more clauses that are of equal importance. Coordinating conjunctions. The most common coordinating conjunctions in English are fanboys. For, reason. And, addition. Nor, negation of both options. But, contrast or choice slash alternative. Yet, contrast. So, result. 2. Subordination. 
Subordination is used to link a dependent clause, which cannot stand alone as a complete sentence, to an independent clause, which can. Common subordinating conjunctions include, because, reason. Although, contrast. Since, time or reason. Unless, condition. While, time or contrast. If, condition. When, time. After, time. Generative grammar is Noam Chomsky's theory that suggests humans are born with an innate ability to understand and produce language, driven by a language acquisition device, LAD. This theory proposes a universal grammar, a set of rules common to all languages. Chomsky introduced deep structure, the underlying meaning of sentences, and surface structure, how sentences are expressed, to explain language formation. Transformational rules allow these deep structures to be converted into various surface structures, like questions or passive sentences. The theory emphasizes that children acquire language rapidly, suggesting that grammar is not fully learned from the environment but is based on innate principles, known as the poverty of the stimulus. Generative grammar revolutionized linguistics by shifting the focus to cognitive mechanisms behind language, though it has faced criticism and evolved, notably into Chomsky's minimalist program. Dependency grammar is a linguistic theory that focuses on the relationships between words in a sentence rather than their hierarchical structure. In this model, each word in a sentence is connected directly to another word, forming a dependency relationship. At the core of dependency grammar is the concept of a head and its dependence. The head is the central word that determines the syntactic category of the phrase, while the dependents modify or complement the head. For example, in the sentence, she eats an apple, eats is the head, and she and an apple are its dependents. Dependency grammar is different from phrase structure grammars, like Chomsky's generative grammar, which emphasize the hierarchical tree structure of sentences. Instead, dependency grammar represents sentence structure as a network of direct relationships, making it particularly useful for analyzing languages with free word order and for applications in computational linguistics. Head-driven phrase structure grammar, HPSG, is a constraint-based framework for analyzing the syntax and semantics of natural languages. HPSG uses a set of constraints to describe how words and phrases combine. In HPSG, linguistic elements are represented as feature structures, which are collections of attribute-value pairs. These structures describe various linguistic properties like syntactic category, tense, number, or meaning. The grammar consists of constraints that specify how these features can combine, ensuring that only well-formed sentences are generated. One key aspect of HPSG is its emphasis on lexical information. Each word, or head, carries rich information that dictates how it interacts with other elements in a sentence. This information guides the construction of phrases and sentences, making the framework highly flexible and able to handle complex linguistic phenomena. Construction grammar, CXG, is a linguistic theory that views language as a collection of learned pairings between forms, structures, and meanings, known as constructions. In CXG, these constructions range from simple words to complex sentence patterns, each carrying its own specific meaning. Unlike traditional grammars that separate syntax and semantics, CXG treats every construction as inherently meaningful. For example, the sentence pattern X gives Y Z, as in, she gave him a gift, is a construction that conveys the meaning of a transfer between three participants. CXG argues that speakers learn these constructions through exposure, gradually building up a mental inventory of four meaning pairings. This approach emphasizes the importance of usage and experience in language acquisition. CXG provides a holistic view of language, accounting for idiomatic expressions, metaphorical language, and other phenomena that traditional rule-based grammars struggle to explain. Common syntactic phenomena. 1. Sentence types, declarative, statements that provide information, she is reading a book. Interrogative, questions that seek information, e.g., are you coming? Imperative, commands or requests, e.g., close the door. Exclamatory, sentences expressing strong emotion, e.g., what a beautiful day. 2. Transformations, these are operations that change the structure of a sentence while retaining its meaning. Passive voice, shifts the focus from the subject to the object, e.g., the book was read by her. Question formation, transforms statements into questions, e.g., she is reading, becomes, is she reading. 3. The ellipsis, the omission of words that are understood in context, making sentences more concise, e.g., she can play the guitar, and he, can play, the piano. 4. Anaphora, the use of pronouns or phrases to refer back to something previously mentioned, e.g., Sarah lost her book, and she is looking for it. Cross-linguistic syntax. Syntax varies across languages.
1. Word order can be flexible or rigid, e.g. Latin versus Chinese. 2. Universal grammar, Chomsky's theory of inherent structural principles shared by all languages. Syntax in computational linguistics. In computational linguistics, syntax is crucial for natural language processing, NLP. Parsing algorithms are used in applications like machine translation and speech recognition. Challenges in syntax. 1. Ambiguity. Ambiguity occurs when a sentence can be interpreted in more than one way due to its structure. For example, I saw the man with the telescope can mean either that you used a telescope to see the man or that the man you saw had a telescope. This ambiguity arises from the way words and phrases are arranged, making it unclear which meaning is intended. 2. Syntactic complexity. Syntactic complexity refers to sentences with multiple layers of subordination or intricate structures, making them difficult to parse or understand. For instance, a sentence like, the book that the student who won the prize wrote was published last year, contains several embedded clauses. These layers add complexity and challenge both comprehension and grammatical analysis, especially in languages with flexible word order. These challenges highlight the intricacies of syntax and its impact on effective communication. Application of syntax. The study of sentence structure has several important applications. 1. Language learning. Mastering syntax helps learners understand and produce grammatically correct sentences, which is essential for fluency and effective communication. 2. Literary analysis. Examining syntax reveals how authors craft style, tone, and meaning. Sentence structure can convey nuances and contribute to the overall impact of a literary work. 3. Linguistic research. Analyzing syntax aids in understanding how languages function and how cognitive processes influence language use. It provides insights into language structure and how it reflects human thought processes. Each application highlights the significance of syntax in mastering language skills, interpreting texts, and exploring linguistic phenomena. Conclusion Syntax is essential to human language, providing structure and meaning. It intersects with linguistics, cognitive science, and computer science, offering insights into communication and cognition.